Good evening, folks, and glad to have you with us tonight, Balfour Baptist Church, and as we do our Wednesday night prayer session, and uh, we take time to go before the Lord and to seek His face, and so we certainly are grateful for all of you being here. Uh, we hope that you enjoyed the services this past Sunday, and uh, as we move into this midweek, we certainly want to be mindful of many of our prayer requests and different things that we have going on and want to prepare for this coming weekend. And uh, so we're much in prayer that the Lord will be here with us and, and bless in our time together. Tonight, if you would, I'd like for you to uh, just join me tonight as we open up our service in prayer. And uh, let's just call upon him today to bless us. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day and we praise you and honor you, Lord. We glorify your name. And uh, Lord, we lift you up high and we ask that God today you would receive our praise and our glory. That Lord, all goes to you. Lord, you are the author and the finisher of all things. God, under your power is all things that reside. So, God, we pray today that, God, you would help us just to trust in you. God, take us and lead us now, Lord, we pray and help us, oh God, I pray, to walk in obedience to you. Father, forgive us of all of our sins. Forgive me. And, Lord, anything in my life, God, that is not godly or Christ-like, may you cleanse it. And may you help me, Lord, to stand in your presence now, Lord, and Father, that you would hear my prayer and that you would hear my supplication. Lord, I pray on behalf of my church that, Lord, those that are tuned in tonight and, and Lord, even those that are here. And, Lord, we were reminded this past Sunday of, God, of how we need to repent of our sins and ask God to help us to be able to turn. And, Lord, to uh, Lord walk in that narrow path to you. So, God, cleanse us and wash us and make us white as snow today. And, God, hear our praise. God, we just want to tell you that we love you. We thank you and we praise you. And we just ask you now, Lord, to be with us. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Tonight, as we come into our time of supplication, uh, we want to remember several names. Uh, we, we're we aware of several people that are struggling. Um, one name that we've prayed for for several months now is, is Kathy Needham. And I don't know a whole lot about it, but uh, I was made aware that she may have been taken to a uh, hospice house. And so I'll be following up on that a little bit more after this service. And so um, please pray for the Needham family and pray for Kathy as she's endured a long battle with brain cancer. And uh, it's my understanding that she is there now. And so certainly lift her up and pray for her. Uh, I want you to continue to pray for Cleve Beasley. Uh, I talked to Cleve's wife last night and Cleve has had a time with uh, his heart issues and with uh, some different things that are going on there, but uh, he is back at home. Spent most of the day yesterday at the Veterans Hospital over in uh, Durham, but he is back at home and he's trying to get some rest and uh, hopefully in a few weeks he'll be cleared out and uh, everything will be good for him. Uh, continue to pray for Ken Bird. It's my understanding Ken's already doing stuff and, and working, but we want to continue to lift him up. Uh, we praise the Lord for Becky Brown. And uh, Becky has had a heart procedure, and it seems like her heart is back in rhythm. And so we're grateful for that. I want to pray for Joe Church, and uh, as Joe has turned 95 years old. And, uh, and we just celebrate that fact and ask that God would just give him uh, renewed strength and vigor as he moves forward. Uh, I want to lift up Pat Glass as Pat deals with uh, Alzheimer's and, um, and uh, the challenges that is presenting her and Tom as they move forward in the life. Uh, we think of Nicole Hedgepeth and just ask that God would continue to be with her and strengthen her. Uh, we certainly want to lift up Judy Castle and, uh, and pray that uh, the Lord would be with her and strengthen her as she deals with her health issues. And, and she deals with the challenges uh, that she's facing with Harry, her husband, and just pray that God's mercy would be there. Uh, Mark and I went and visited with Mike Macon, and uh, we pray for Mike. Uh, he is getting better. He's having good days and bad days. Uh, Still having a lot of headaches and not feeling very well. And, um, and so, but he is getting there. And so hopefully in about a month's time or so that maybe Mike will be back. Uh, it takes a while to get all that blood, you know, absorbed by the body. And so we will just pray for that. But God has wrought a miracle in his life. And uh, we want to pray for an unspoken request there in his family that God would be with them in this also. Uh, continue to pray for my mother, if you would, as she deals with the onset of Alzheimer's. And then also Jolene Mills. Uh, we talked to Gary Myron this morning, and uh, Gary was at our, our prayer breakfast uh, for the men. And uh, Gary said that uh, she continues to kind of go downhill, and 
it's not looking real good. So lift up her and just pray. Uh, she's a sweet lady, and uh, she just needs God's grace today. Uh, continue to pray for Roger Robbins. Roger had a fall uh, the other day and bashed his nose and skinned his head up and uh, forehead and um, shoulder. And so we just need to pray for Roger as he uh, tries to recover from that. I uh, want to lift up Mary Lee Ruth and continue to know that she's praying that we're praying for her. And if she's listening, do you know that we are praying for you and lifting you up? And then I uh, think about Brenda Saylor. She continues to heal from the uh, double fracture of her fibula. And uh, God is healing that. And so we continue to lift her up. Uh, it's good to see Debbie Shope here last Sunday. And as Debbie fights uh, the onset of cancer and that she has uh, foregone this last treatment, this is doing a number on her. And we just pray that God will just give her a good report as she moves forward. Uh, we continue to pray for Sarah Southern. Sarah is uh, um, trying to recover from some illness that she's had. And uh, we're just praying that God will continue to strengthen her that she can get back with us. So there's a lot of needs out there. And I'm sure that I probably have forgotten some somewhere. Continue to pray for Gary Gray. God is, is doing a great work in Gary's life. He's actually going without oxygen during most of the day. And will wear it when he goes to bed. And um, this is with somebody that was not supposed to be here. And uh, so we thank God for that. I saw Harvey Cagle a few minutes ago, and Harvey said his back is much better. But he asked that we would continue to pray for Harvey Cagle Jr., his son. Um, they're afraid he may have cancer uh, in his lungs. And so he's going for some testing on that. So remember him if you would. But the list goes on and on. And there's many needs uh, that we have. And, uh, and we just pray that God would just move um, in a mighty way and that God would help uh, uh, all these people. And thought I had my phone turned down, but it was a little bit loud on silence, wasn't it? So uh, anyway, so we just pray today that God will take all these requests and help us to be able to move forward for the glory of God. And that God would move in all these families. And I'm going to ask Mark if he would come up and if Mark would lead us to the throne of grace and mercy and that God would help us today to just feel his presence and his power. Also remember tonight while you're watching this, uh, the Awanas is having their awards night and I just want to publicly thank all the parents for letting their kids come, all the teachers and uh, their hard work. And that man up there, Dwight Ayers, uh, who has taken this Awana thing while I'm dealing with youth and, uh, and everyone that participates in making that uh, turn out as good as it's been this year. So tonight's the last night and uh, we'll have our awards night. And uh, I pray that God will continue to speak into these children's lives, that people would step up to help teach next year when we start back in the fall and to see how important it is for children to know who Jesus is at a young age. So let's pray. Father, we do thank you for this time to come into your sanctuary, into your house, Lord to bring praises before your throne. And so, Father, as Pastor read a list of names to people who need a touch. And, Father, we pray tonight that your Holy Spirit would uh, answer that. That, Lord, that people could sense your very presence, that they could begin to feel your presence there and their bodies begin to heal. But most of all, Lord, that they still hear the small voice that speaks to them. And God, that would give them the strength to make it from day to day. Lord, I pray for Brother Stretch, as uh, Pastor said, if his, his wife's down at hospice. So God, just touch the Needham family. Lord, may they sense you. And Lord, you've been good. You've been good to us all. So God, just help them through this valley that they're walking through tonight. And Lord, I think about all those who are out of the house. Those who need to come back and to worship and those who need to sense your very presence. And Father, we know we can sit at home and watch church, but it's not the same. You can't sense the very power of your Holy Spirit as it is in the house of God. So God, we need to have a hunger to feel and sense your presence whenever we're in this house. And Lord, that you would move in a mighty way, that people would continue to get saved, continue to be baptized, continue to come to Balfour Baptist Church to grow the kingdom. And Lord, I'm excited about what the future holds. Lord, you have a plan. 
You have a direction for Balfour Baptist Church. Lord, we pray that our shepherd would continue to follow your guidance. That, Lord, that each step that we take, each move that we make, that, God, it is done under the unction of your Holy Spirit. So, God, guide and give that direction is needed. Lord, we pray for those who will be traveling on vacation. And, Lord, we pray for our uh, Baptist convention that will be held next week. And uh, where Pastor Gary and myself will be at uh, to vote on some critical issues there. So, God, there's a lot taking place. But the wonderful thing is you're still in control. So God, continue to speak to our hearts. Continue to move in our lives. Lord, may we be the light that would shine forth in the darkness of this sinful world. So we love you tonight, Lord. We thank you for your many blessings. And Lord, that uh, Debbie Shope, you just reminded me, Lord, that the, the treatments were working. And now she's got to take medicine for the next few months. And so, God, we give you glory about that. And uh, to see Gary Gray this morning once again without that oxygen tank. All glory is yours, Father. You've touched him. And we pray that you'll continue to do that. So, God, again, thank you for all that you do. We ask that you anoint our shepherd. Lord, that you touch him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet with your power. And, Lord, those things that he brings tonight would be that stuff that moves us to motivate us to go into all our world and seek those who are lost. For it's in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Remember, folks, Jesus loves you. He really does. Thank you, Brother Mark. And uh, tonight we continue on with our Bible study about heaven. And tonight the first uh, statement or question that we're going to ask is, what did Jesus mean when he said, the last will be first and the first will be last? The last will be first and the first will be last. And today we want to look at uh, Matthew 20. Um, and uh, we're going to be going there in just a moment. Our key verse uh, of Matthew 20 where it says, So the last shall be first and the first last, for many be called, but few are chosen. And that's our kickoff verse for today, and uh, that's what we'll look at. The scripture is used to point out the danger of thinking that we will go to heaven just because we're a prominent people, or we're people of notoriety, or, or we're people that uh, uh, you know, are in a position of authority, and because we're religious. But the Bible says that the only ones... Really? If all of you would, uh, as we go, we, as all of you know, this is live, and so uh, uh, let's have prayer. Father, I ask you right now in the name of Jesus that, uh, Lord, the angels in heaven are singing above, and Lord, a soul has been set free from this world. A lady who has been so prominent in years past here at Balfour, uh, Cat Church has gone on to be with the Lord. Father, I pray that God now as they go and try to find Joe and, and Lord to share with him, I pray that your grace would be sufficient. Father, direct Mark uh, to find him. And God, I pray that uh, Lord, that you'll just give him the peace that he needs. Um, God, I thank you that we have you to run to. And Father, I pray that God, your name would be honored and exalted and praised. Father, be with us now and watch over us. And God, help us, Lord, to get our mind, Lord, on your word. And God, be reminded that God, there's coming a day for all of us. She's fought a long fight. It's been tough the last few months. But God, you've took her home now. And so God, we pray that uh, for this family, that God, you'll minister to them in this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, I'm going to try to get my mind back on this, but... Uh, huh? Yes, I know. We need to focus on uh, the Word of God here today, and uh, certainly uh, uh, we need to move forward. But uh, we need to remember today, as we face times such as what we've just experienced, as one of ours have passed on, that, that uh, it is really a wonderful thing to know that we step out of this world and into the presence of God. 
and that our salvation is by grace and grace alone. And um, I think about Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. It says, For grace are you saved through faith, and that not of, your, that not of yourself. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So we know today, even in the home going of one of ours, and one of the greatest gifts that she's ever received is when Jesus accepted her uh, as one of his children. And the blood was applied, her name written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and for all of us. And so my challenge to all of us that are listening today, and all that are uh, here today, and I pray God's richest blessing as our heart is, is really shaken and broken, and it's all I can do to, you know, to keep my mind on what I'm doing this morning, but I believe it would honor Jesus this morning to praise Him and to honor Him for His power and His faithfulness and His goodness to us. I want us to go to Matthew chapter 20, and we'll begin with verse 1, and we want to go down to that verse 16, uh, a parable about men hired to work in a field. It says, For the kingdom of heaven is likened to a man that is a householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. And when he agreed with laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right I will give you. And they went their way. And again he went out about the sixth and ninth hour and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing idle and said unto them, Why stand you here all day, all day idle? And they said unto him, Because no man hath hired us. And he said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that ye shall receive. So when evening was come, the Lord of the vineyard said unto the steward, Call the laborers, and give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. And when they had came that were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny. But when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more. And they likewise received every man a penny. And when they had received it, they murmured against the good man of the house, saying, These last have wrought but one hour, and thou hast made them equal to us, which hath borne the burden of the heat of the day. But he answered one of them, and he said, Friend, I do thee no wrong. Didst not thou agree to with me for a penny? Take that that thine is, and go thy way. And I will give unto this last, even as I do unto thee. Is it not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own? Is thy not evil because I am good? So the last shall be first, and the first last. For many will be called, but few are chosen. So today... Uh, you know, we think about this, uh, we think that some worked all day, others were given work late in the day, but they were all given the same wage. And there's coming a day when our Heavenly Father will summon us all home. The thief on the cross who acknowledged his sinfulness to Jesus and was given eternal life in his last moments of life, the same joys of heaven came to him as those who got saved early in life and we're ready to go home. A true believer should never deny the joy of forgiveness and salvation. To those who almost missed have had their sins forgiven. Those who went right up to the line. It would break the heart of God for one of his own to deserve joy. From seeing people denied forgiveness of sin. Just because they waited until the last minute. The only sadness we should feel is when someone rejects the Lord and chooses not to serve Him. Witness for Him, enjoy His Lord, and chooses not to, to be the kind of person living in His presence. And they live a life of obedience to the Lord. Folks, I want you to understand today that when Cat Church obviously was called out a little bit ago, and I have no idea how long, I don't know anything about it other than what all of you have heard tonight that are here. But when the Lord called her out of this life, she has stepped into the joyous life of the Savior. She has put on immortality. 
She has taken on all that God has promised her. And her body no longer hurts. She is no longer sick. And she's in basking in the glory of God today. And that is what we need to understand and what we desire for others to also know. For some, been saved for many years. Some have walked this path for a long time. And yet we know that there will be some that will be saved in the last moments of their life. And what the Word says here is that when you get Jesus, you get it all. And there's no separation. There's not this one's going to have more than you or that, but you've got it all. And so that's what we've got today, even if it's at the end of the journey. Now, Jesus gave his life for a ransom for many. He paid the price <coughs> that we've talked about many times that we could never pay. He paid it for this lady that we have talked about this morning. He's paid it for Donna and for Doug and for each one of my girls here, Bobby and Glenda, for Dwight and for myself. He paid a price that I could not repay him for. I could not buy my way to heaven. But God sent his son. He died on that cross. He shed his blood and he set us free today. And if we're believing in by faith in him, we're free indeed. And we have a wonderful home awaiting us. Matthew 20, 28 says this, Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give His life as a ransom for many. So I want you to understand tonight, when we talk about eternal life, how clear can it be when you've got a child of God who has stepped out of this world this morning and gone home? Now we know this, there was a time when she sang the praises of God right up here. But the thing that evolves around all this is that she knew him. That she had a personal relationship with him. And for all of us today, that's what we must have. That's why God has called me to this pulpit. That's why we preached last week uh, uh, the powerful message, not from just the preacher preaching it, the, the powerful message because the Spirit of God spoke through King David as he struggled with sin in his life as a believer. It's about being prepared for this day that was coming for all of us. Do you know one of these days, somewhere, somewhere, uh, somehow, somebody's going to pick up the phone and say, Did you know that Donna Jones went home today? Did you know that Bobby Brown has gone home? Did you know that Glenda has left this world today? Did you know that Doug Smith has gone home to be with, with the Lord in heaven? Did you know that Dwight Ayers has gone home to be with Jesus? Did you know that Gary Mason has left this world and has gone home to be with Christ? And folks, it's only because of what Christ has done for us. Yes, yeah, a sad time because we miss those people, but it's a glorious time. Because she has left the bonds of filth, wickedness, and sin. And has gone home to be with him. So remember, the first and the last will be welcomed in his presence with the same outcome. Forgiveness and eternal life. There's some of us sometimes that may harbor grudges and feel resentful because, well, you know, just like you have some say, I've been toiling as being a Christian for all these years, 40, 50, 60 years. And I've been doing all this stuff, and it's just not fair that a man like, it, it, let's say Doug just got saved, let's say it's not fair for him to get everything that I'm going to get. That's how the worldly mind thinks. But the Word of God says, Doug will receive forgiveness and eternal life, just like somebody that's been here for 70 years serving God. And, and that's the heavenly truth of that. So, who are you praying for today that may be clinging to the last moments of life without Christ? Who is it in your life right now that is an image that pops up before you that they're getting dangerously close to the end? Or their health is not good? Who are you praying for today? You know, I was reminded the other day of a, of a friend of mine, actually, he's actually a closer friend with my sister, but he had a, apparently a, a massive heart attack and uh, ran into the building down there uh, below where the old blue mist was and wrecked, and he left this world. 
And um, by all accounts I've received, he was a born-again believer. He was a Christian. He's ready to go home. But God called him. He had no idea, and he's much younger than I am. And he's much younger than, than most of us in this room this morning. So we're reminded that death waits on no one. And none of us have the freedom of knowing that we know when our day is going to be, when we'll check out of here. We have to live every day expectantly knowing today he may call me. My prayer was this morning as I came up the road is, God, if you should take me today, help me to be ready. Help me to, to have the blood applied. Help me to be walking in victory. Help me to be praising your name. <clears throat> help me to do the things that bring honor and glory to your name. And Lord, also, if the trumpet of God sounds... And you call your bride out of here. All of us that have been born again, saved by the power of the blood, God, help me to be ready to leave this place. Help me to go. And the filth that Satan would try to attach to my life, God, break it. And in Jesus' name, give me victory. And I hope that's to pray that all of you have too, because that day is coming for all of us. You can go over there to, you know, uh, Hebrews 9, 27 and 28 and look at that, and it'll talk about... There's coming a day we'll stand before God to give an account. And that we know that that hope that we have is in Him. So may our prayer list be filled with names. And may we pray diligently for them. May we pray that the Holy Spirit would speak to their heart. I had a man tell me yesterday that his heart is broken. That his child is, is uh, falling victim to a, a, a trap that has been set by the enemy that is trying to lure her away from her walk with Christ and get her involved in physical activities and stuff that she shouldn't be in. And yet we realize that mostly all we can do is pray. Pray that the power of conviction would fall upon her and would fall upon the young man that is trying to uh, uh, proceed with that. But pray. I know that uh, many times and I know a lot of people don't like me calling their names out, but, uh, you know, I had one scold me a little bit the other day, but many times, Donna, you have told me that I pray for you and I pray for your wife, pray for your little boy, your grandson, my son, my daughter, my grandchildren, and I appreciate that so much. That's what we ought to be about. We need to be praying for folks that God would move in their life, and uh, especially those that we, we question. We never know. You know, if somebody dies today, we trust that that relationship is intact, but only God knows. You know, I trust that Kathy Needham, his heart is where it's supposed to be today. Uh, I can only go off of the testimony that I hear, but God only is the one that really knows. And so we just have to keep trusting in that. So that's our first one for tonight. Uh, the second one is... Why doesn't God take us to heaven the minute we commit our lives to Christ? You ever thought about that? Wouldn't it be kind of neat in a way that when you get saved and you, 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 you break that power of sin, wonder why God just doesn't take us home then. Instead, we have to live and fight the devil and the things of this world. So if God were to take uh, all those that he immediately saves to heaven, it would not be true to his word. Now, in John 9, 4, it says, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. For the night cometh when no man can work. So God today has a plan in, a, in place for every one of our lives that we would be a shining light and a salt to this world. That we'd be that preservative, that we would be life and that we would be a light that shines out into the darkness. This is the heavenly design for the body of Christ, the church. What is the church? It certainly is not this building. It's not Sunset Avenue. It's not First Baptist. It's not some big church in Texas or Florida. The church is the body of Christ, believers that have trusted him. Jesus told his disciples this in John 15, 8. John 15, 8. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. What is that fruit? That is sharing the love of God. That is sharing uh, the power of God in people's lives. I listened to one of our prospective deacons who is sick right now, and I've called his name out in prayer. 
Yesterday, Brother Mike, we were meeting with him and talking to him, and he said, I know one thing. He said, this has shaken me to understand that our time is short. And he said, my level of pain was at a 10. And he said, but it's changed me. And he said, I have a reason now to tell people why I have a hope. And that hope is in Christ. And that hope has always been there for him, but it helps you to understand why there is still yet day, we must tell them. So being here on the earth is not like being in a waiting room where we sit idly by waiting for our departure. It's not about her, you know, she was stuck in a bed. She was bedridden. We're thinking about Kat this morning now. She was bedridden. The quality of life had eroded greatly away. And Joe had got to the point that he couldn't hardly deal with her or handle her. And God has taken that away from her today. And God has given her the blessings of eternal life, has given her a glorified body, whatever that might look like, because the Bible says she looks like him. You know, she's a spirit now, and she's up there with him, and we will see her again. So remember, earth is a dramatic stage that is displaying. It's good and evil. It's Christ's victory over Satan's deceptions, and it's heaven's glory. Over the gore of hell. Each one of us are part of this divine drama. And you have a part to play in it. So I ask you a question today. What is our purpose? What is our purpose as we move forward? Well, <clears throat> well God's purpose for us is to bring him. And this is an answer that all of you must have a basic answer. If somebody were to say, Glenda, what is the purpose that you're even here? What is the purpose? I've had some people say, well, someone that I love dearly, and she's struggling with Alzheimer's. She says, why do I even exist? What is my purpose here? And she's lost sight of that. And I have to try to love on her and talk to her and all like that. But you want to know what your purpose is? God's purpose for us is to bring honor and glory to Him by the way that we live our lives and how we work in order that we might win souls to the kingdom of God. That's why he don't take you immediately to heaven. That's why, Doug, when you did get saved, that's why he didn't take you out immediately. He now wants you to be a Christ-like individual who leads others to Christ or has an input or effect on them to change them. And that's for all of us today. This ain't just about Doug or just me, but it's about all of us here today. All of you that are listening today, it's about all of us knowing that our goal is to honor God with our life, our minds, everything about us, and to lead others to Him. That means going to witness. That means to go to visit the shut-ins, the lost, the sick, those that can't get out. It means to send the cards. It means to encourage people. It means to pray for folks. And that's what we've got to do. So, if there were no one left, now I want you all to think about this for no, just a minute. If there were no one left on this earth to demonstrate Christ's compassion and His righteousness, what kind of world would it be? Y'all imagine something for just a minute. One of these days, the trumpet of God will sound. I have no idea when it will be. I think it's getting very, very close. But one of these days, there will be a shout from the Father. And there'll be a shout from the voice of the archangel and a trumpet blast of heaven as the trumpets blare out a call for us to come out of this world. And the bride of Christ in the twinkling of an eye will rise and leave this place. And no doubt we'll leave our clothes and possessions and everything behind as we're taken out of here. And this world will try to make answers why all these people have been left because there's going to be a lot of people are still here there's going to be a lot of people that darken the doors of a church such as Balfour who have to answer the question why am I still here so it comes back down to salvation so you think about when the rapture of the church takes place the spirit of God is lifted with his bride going home is lifted from this world can y'all imagine what this place, Doug, can you imagine what it's going to be like when God, right now God is a restrainer. The Holy Spirit restrains evil. Believe it or not, it restrains it. It can only go so far. 
Just like the ocean water, when the waves come in, God's, God basically tells it, you can only go this far. Well, evil right now, there's a limit to what it can do. But there's coming a day when the Spirit of God has been taken away and wickedness totally flourishes. There's something to think about, and uh, it's not a very pleasant thing, and I don't want to be here. I want to go home, and I, I want to be with Christ. So, if there was no one left to tell others about God's love, then how would people ever know about Christ and put their trust in Him? How would a little boy or a little girl back here in one of the children's classes that a lot of people think, well, I can't put up with all that yelling and ram, ram but what if one child accepts Jesus Christ? What if one child here at Balfour, because of your efforts, says yes to Christ and their life is forever changed? Then it's all worth it. Jesus commanded his disciples in Mark 16, 15, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So we know that that's what we're all called to do. So as I bring this little question to a conclusion, it says, <clears throat> none of us wants to sit around and do nothing. I talked to two different guys this week that are wanting to be deacons, and they said, I just want to serve. I, I want to do something for the kingdom. I want to serve. I don't care about being in charge. Don't want to be in bosses over everybody. I just want to serve. And man, it's so refreshing to hear that. And none of us want to just sit around and do nothing. Not any of us want to sit idly down and do nothing for the Lord. I don't want to stand before God with nothing to present to Him. I don't want to stand there and say, I did nothing for your kingdom. And there's some people that are like that. Thank God there's many that are not, but there's many that are like that. They show up, they worship, they're takers, and they go home. And folks, it takes a lot of work to get done what we need to do. So we should be busy at work in the name of the Lord, helping others to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. We are called to be witnesses for Christ. And we are to bring His love and His transforming power to a broken and confused world. And that's why He don't take us immediately out of this world. So the third and last one uh, that we're going to look at tonight is... is uh, Hopefully will be one that will challenge us as we end up our session today. Does God speak to us from heaven? Does God speak to, from heaven? Well, God speaks to the human heart. To our deepest rooted thing that we always refer to in the heart area. But our emotions, our mind, God speaks to the human heart. And while I have never heard God's audible voice. Nor do I think I hardly could take it probably. It would be so powerful. The Lord has spoken to me many times throughout my life. And all of you know that he speaks to us through the power of the Holy Spirit. It's the, it's the third person of the Trinity. The Holy Spirit. That reveals his truth to us through his word. When you sit down and read the Bible and it jumps off the page at you. And something illuminates in your mind. It's the Spirit of God. When I walk from that bench sometimes, or I'm sitting on that bench, and I can feel almost like honey that is poured over my head, is I can feel the presence of God fall upon me for this moment. It's a feeling like I can never tell you when my life is right, I know that I'm doing the right thing, and I feel God invade my presence. And I know that it's only Him. So, how do we recognize His voice? And I want you to think about this for just a minute. How do you recognize the voice of God in your life? Well, the first thing you got to do is you got to belong to him. I mean, the only thing that a sinner right now can really pray is a prayer of repentance. If you want to get down to it. That means, you know, if one of you were to ask me, if somebody prays and says, God, I'm, I'm struggling today and I, I believe that you exist. I need your help and I ask you to go with me. I don't believe it gets out of the ceiling because they don't know him. They have not had a relationship with Christ. The blood of Jesus has not been applied to their life. And I believe that God does not hear the prayers of somebody that is not his child. He will hear the prayer of repentance. When somebody says, Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I ask you today, Lord, 
to forgive me of my sins. I believe God hears that. Then after that, the Spirit of God comes and is put as a deposit in our heart. And I believe that that down payment that God puts into us is there. And that Spirit begins to work in our life and begins to reveal truth. That's why when somebody, if, if this Sunday we have somebody get saved, just two or three weeks ago, this young man that got baptized, he sat right there and listened intently. He hadn't been here in two weeks. But he told me yesterday he'd be back in the house this week. <clears throat> the Spirit of God comes into that heart and begins to reveal truth. And he shared out of his own mouth, he said, I've been reading it. It just comes alive now that never before was it like this, but it's speaking to me. That's God revealing his truth. But we've got to belong to him first. And the Spirit of God has to live within our heart. And we talked about that's why it's so important in Psalm 51. We cannot allow filth to be in our life. Because if we have filth, it will not steal our salvation. But you don't have a fellowship with God. That means God will not turn his ear to your prayer. When you are not right and you're living apart from where God would have you to be, you're not in step with him and he is not going to move upon your request until you get that under the blood. And I hope everybody understands that. John 18, 37 says, Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. So if we're of the truth, if we've been born again, if we have the Spirit of God living inside of us, we hear His voice. And we also know when something's not right. If I have a relationship with my wife and things have broken that fellowship that we're supposed to have, I know when it's there. And I have to do what I've got to do to make sure that that's right. It's much greater than that for our Heavenly Father. So I want to look at some things. Of how do we recognize His voice? First of all, God speaks through His written Word. This Bible right here, which is about wore out, that my daughter gave me when I came to Balfour. But I've used it many, many times to preach out of. But you've got to allow the words of this book to permeate your mind and to eventually root into your heart. It's the word of God. The authors of this Bible made it clear that God uses them to speak, uh, speak to them and through them to you. More than 3,000 times they said, thus saith the Lord. And so therefore we must know it. 2 Timothy 3.16 reminds you what the word of God is. It says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So we must never allow anything or anyone to take the place of the Bible God in our life. We all need to probably read it more. Secondly today, how do we recognize his voice? God speaks through nature. Romans 1.20 says this. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen. Being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. You know what that means? That means a man or a woman can walk out that door and just look around. And you ought to be able to recognize something much greater than I did created all this. And so God exists and, it, and exposes himself to you from his creation of what he's done. So we're without excuse. Thirdly, God speaks through his son, Jesus Christ, who is revealed in the pages of scripture and is the word of God incarnate. That's why many people, when they lead somebody to Christ, the first book really that they need to go to is the book of John. Because John begins to explain to you as Jesus introduces himself into your life. And maybe for us today, we need to reread John frequently to be reminded of the power of Jesus and what he has done for us. So, he is God's word incarnate. He literally, by flesh, is the one that we need to keep our eyes on. Then I think about Hebrews uh, chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. And it says, God who at various times and in different ways spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, 
whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds. So Jesus reveals to us his plan for our life. And number four, God speaks to us by the power of the Holy Spirit. That still small voice that spoke to Elijah. That still small voice that many of you have heard speak to you. It is a loud and clear conviction of what God wants us to do. You know, I, I look for God's direction in my life. And I recognize that God shows me and speaks to me through these ways. But the greatest way in my mind is by the power of the Holy Spirit. God will speak and say, this is where I want you to go. This is what I want you to do. And I'll go with you. I had a church. And I'm just going to tell you all, it's just a few of you here. They tried to get me to leave here just a week or so ago. And it would have been a great thing. I often had uh, wondered about doing that. But I tell you only this because the Holy Spirit led me here. Gave me a piece about coming to Balfour with a mission. That mission is to exalt and honor Him. God has never told me to leave. So therefore I told them let's just not waste a lot of time. I love the church. I love what y'all are trying to do. And I would love to help you. But God's never told me I'm done. There will be a day when I'll be done. Maybe not done from serving him, but I'll be done from being pastor. But that day is not today. And so I told them no, that I would not be interested. And it was a hard thing to do because I love those people. But that still small voice that gives you that word of when you're to go, when you're not to, what you're to do, what you're not to do. And so I pray that all of us will learn to hear that. Proverbs 20, 27 says, The lamp of the Lord searches the spirit of a man, and it searches out his innermost being. And so that means, when you say man, that means for male and female, that the lamp of God, the light of God, searches all of our hearts and tries to speak to us and guide us. So we must never silence that inner voice. We must never allow the devil to cause the world to get so busy around us that we don't hear him. We should never let too many things come into our life that we can't hear that inner voice. But we must check what we think. That it's saying against the scriptures. But the only thing that matters is what the word of God says. Folks, I want you to understand this. As long as I stand in this pulpit. The only thing that matters is not how good I can preach. Not how good I can have if my voice is one that can keep people's attention or or if I've learned enough <coughs> over the years and there's talents and abilities that God does give different people to do this. But folks, that's not what matters. The only thing that matters is what's in this book. And that's why everything that you hear must be based on what God's Word says. The only thing that will change Balfour Baptist Church and make it the only thing that in my mind is changing Balfour is the power of God's Word and the Holy Spirit. The only thing that will change my life is the power of God's word. And that's what we must adhere to as we move forward. So we must check what we're saying against the scripture. Make sure that inner voice is true to God's word. And then we have to be willing to obey. And uh, if you're like me, oftentimes I find myself uh, not obeying to the point that I know that God's called me to. And God continues to put that search lamp in my heart. It reminds me that I'm his, but that I have more work to do and I need to draw closer. And so I challenge all of you today. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an everyday deal. I don't want to say it's a struggle because it's not a struggle. God will help us and give us grace. But folks, it's about doing what is right and trusting him. Even in the midst of hard things, even in the midst of a death this morning, God will be there with us. He'll be there with Brother Joe. He'll comfort him and he'll be with him and the family. Even in the midst of struggles, God is there. God created her. He's created you. And he has control of your life. So if you ever question, what is my reason for being here? What is my purpose? Your purpose is to honor God. Clear and simply. Never forget that.
Never allow Satan to tell you that you're finished or you're no good. Your purpose is to lift up the name of the Lord and to honor Him. And to be faithful when you're called. So let's close today with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for the day, for the privilege to call upon you. Lord, it's been an unusual Wednesday service. And uh, God, I just pray that you'll help us through this. I certainly pray for the church family, that God, you would be with them. And God, I pray that you would give us uh, the ability to minister and to help people, Lord, during this time. Lord, uh, help the church to be a blessing to Joe. And Lord, I pray that your name would receive honor, praise, and glory. Lord, be with us now, Lord. Watch over us, guide and direct, and strengthen our lives. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.